Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be having a look at one of my all-time favourite vintage Penguin book series and that's the Penguin Specials. So in this first video we're going to be having a look at issues 1 to 100. Uh, so that's going to be the subject of today's video. Absolutely fascinating stuff to share with you. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is the very first Penguin special. Now, I have to say, um, it's not every video that I try and uh, cover the first 100 books in a, in a particular series. However, you know, with just under 300 Penguin specials published before the end of 1969, um, I don't really want this to be like a 10 video series. So I'm gonna perhaps do it in two or three videos. Um, but the actual wartime related ones uh, went up to number about 150, 160. And then uh, the series was revived again um, into the late 50s and 60s. And I think they're both series are fascinating in their own way. The ones I'm going to be looking at today are all Second World War related titles because that was when the series started, which was with this one. Um, Germany puts back the clock in 1937. So, Edgar Moer was um, quite a renowned journalist of the time and um, he'd been traveling the world uh, following the charting, uh, the rise of um, Germany and also in China he'd been as well. And um, Alan Lane contacted him and said, well, look, um, why don't you update the book and we'll put out an edition um, of 50,000 copies. And that's exactly what they did. Um, and this first special here was was well, it sold out in four days, so it didn't take very long and was reprinted several times. Um, all these early ones, like a lot of the Penguins of the time, do come in dust wrappers. However, to keep mine looking a bit nicer on the shelf, um, I have actually taken the dust wrappers off a lot of these. I've got them um, on the whole, I've got most of them, um, but I take them off just to get them looking good. Um, so that is, as I said, the very first Penguin special. And I mean, it's almost as if, um, uh, Lane wanted to be uh, publishing newspapers and periodicals, which he did do. He did do it like the Transatlantic magazine. But these were, um, the whole point of the specials really was to get books out that were um, of the time. They're really, really current. Um, a very short delay in them receiving the actual manuscript to getting them published as a penguin. Um, usually, um, they could do this within about four weeks, which is fantastic, considering most most books took like a six month run to go through the uh, the entire process. These were very much rush, rushed to get them out the door um, and whilst they remained topical. So this is book two, Mussolini's uh, Roman Empire. And as I said, all of these are pretty much um, very, very topical relating to issues of the Second World War. However, there are some like guidebooks, there's some Pelican ones, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, Blackmail or War there, uh, Genevieve's Tableau. It's amazing. When I was looking to do a little bit of research on these specials, because it's always a series that I've particularly loved, and they do seem to be around in very great quantities. I'm going to pop a picture in now of a copy of Foyle's Bookshop, and this is uh, after the first 10 or so um, Penguin specials have been published. And just look at the quantities there, and they were obviously expecting quite a lot of business on those. Here's a special number four, um, Searchlight on Spain. This is an entirely new book, so they weren't all reprints with added content. Um, these were, um, some of these were brand new, written by, written for Penguin to be published as a special, and uh, they remain incredibly topical at that time. So number five is the first Penguin special, which is a Pelican. So obviously by now the Pelican series had already started, and um, some of these early titles are in the blue Pelican covers, which I do love. Um, this one is on ballet. Got some nice woodcut illustrations in there. 1938. Some photographs as well. Then we have another one, another copy of ballet. So why have I got two, you may wonder. Well, let's have a look. Oh yeah, this was like a little um, promo one um, from a reader of the Sunday Times. Oh, I seem to remember getting this one, actually. Um, yeah, that's why I've got this one. You know, I'd totally forgotten about this. This has got 
a little compliment slip from the Sunday Times newspaper um, with compliments, Sunday Times National Book Fund. Well, there you go. That's quite nice, isn't it? On uh, Sunday Times headed, headed paper. That's why I've got that particular copy in there. So that's number five. I do have a few duplicates of some of my Penguin specials simply because um, there are variations to them. And also um, sometimes the reprints um, are updated or they've got different adverts on, that sort of thing. So here's number six, which is another Pelican um, modern German art. This one is in dust wrapper like these early penguins are. Um, as I said, I have most of the wrappers for these, but I tend to keep them out of the wrappers like I do with some of my main series titles, simply because the wrappers aren't worn out like and the books underneath are generally much minter because they've been protected and they um, uh, are saved on the shelf. Uh, that way they look better on the shelf. Here's uh, book seven in this series. And you see this sort of numbered S for special on the spine. China struggles for unity. This one comes with some maps as well. And this one is also in, a, in its wrapper, 1939. This one's again underneath, absolutely bright and fresh, but in its wrapper, it's a little bit more warm, but that's okay when you consider how old these are now, 1939. I mean, this is hardly yesterday. So, you know, it's good that they've survived this long. Now, these are the sorts of ones that I particularly like. Um, and this is, well, number eight, the Air Defense of Britain. So it's got, this has actually got three sort of books put into the one here, uh, New Factor in Warfare, Air Raid Precautions and Britain's Air Strength. And I find these books absolutely fascinating. Even today, they tell you what, you know, like this one, what, what would you have done under, um, in an air raid, except maybe go down to the shelter, I guess, or hide under the table. Fantastic stuff. And these are real period pieces, these, you know, and that is why I love them so much. Um, I'm also doing this video because some of the later ones, particularly around the time of the Blitz, they, and you'll see as we go along, these, these early editions here are really robust. There's no paper rationing or anything like that. As we go on, the size of the books um, slims down considerably when paper rationing starts to hit. But because these books had massive, massive print runs as they were going on and being published, it meant that Alan Lane throughout the war had a better um, alloc allotment of, um, allocation rather, of paper. So he could use that to his effect, uh, which he did. And he got multiple series launched because he had she had the paper to do it and i guess the other british publishers were quite envious of of his uh paper allowance um number 10 here so the jewish problem and as you see um by now we've already got a bit of a, a you know the first 10 so they're all listed there on the back and the start of this series and um it's quite interesting. So it just sums it up there. So there's Penguin and Pelican specials of books of topical importance published within as short a time as possible from the receipt of the manuscript. So some are reprints of famous books brought up to date, but usually they are entirely new books published for the first time. And that in a nutshell is what the, the specials are, are all about. So that was book 10. So I'm not going to be able to, this is, I don't want this video to go on for hours. So I'm going to fly through these a little bit quicker now. Um, so book 11, it's literary, literary taste. Because we've got some fantastic ones a little bit later on. Book number 12 here is uh, Mortal Storm. Still quite thick, robust books. These as you'll spot. Number 13, what Hitler wants, little caricature of, of Hitler there. Um, Step by steps, the aims and threats which Hitler set out in the original German edition of Mein Kampf have become actualities. What else does he want? So this is asking the British person, what, what do they think? Where is this all leading? So we've got uh, book 14 now, special 14. So this is the same chap who wrote um, uh, special number one, Ed Edgar Moore. This is um, his account of what was happening in China just prior to the outbreak of the Second World War. Once again, a fascinating look at that. Um, this is 1938 still. So you're getting these one, at least one a month, sometimes more than one a month. 
Special number 15, One Man Against Europe. Conrad Haydn, apparently an authority on Hitler and his policies. Number 15. And number 16 is an absolute favourite of mine, uh, Blue Angels and Whales. Um, this one is in a wrapper, although underneath I think it's actually particularly nice. Um, the reason I love this one so much is because it's by Robert Gibbons, who does some fantastic um, uh, woodcuts and engravings. They're just beautiful. And this particular book, uh, there he is. Oh, what a... <laughs> Just look at these illustrations, they're fantastic. And when you think when this actually was published, this is a particularly, a particularly lovely Penguin special, this one. And I'm amazed um, it's not been re-released as a facsimile because it is fantastic. Um, a real high point of these early specials for me was this particular one, Blue Angels of Wales. So if you ever come across that, it comes recommended. So that's the first stack. So I'm gonna pop them all the way to the back there so i've got a bit more room and that was number 16 so we're on i need to dig out number 17 now so let's just pull that pile out so many books to go through as i said doing a hundred books in a single video is no tall order i can assure you but here we are so here's number number 17 which is a warning from the west indies well, a really nice uh, nice copy of that one Seventeen, number eighteen, the Great Illusion. Now, little ten p there. That would have been a bargain, wouldn't it? <laughs> Norman Angel. Once again, a lot of these uh, are what has happened in Britain and Germany, and uh, how best to combat what was by now a foregone conclusion that we were going to full blown war. Um, this is another real high point, actually, of one of the early ones, so Britain by Mass Observation. So if you've never heard of the Mass Observation people, they were um, they were sent into all walks of life, just basically to almost like report back on, um, on how Britain and British people were living at this time, and they're fantastic. And uh, um, you really do need to... Uh, find a copy of this because it's just fantastic i mean that could be a whole video on its own the, the mass observation series um number 20 uh whitman steeds the press i seem to remember this is the very first special that i found out in the world and i was particularly pleased to get it even if the actual book itself wasn't um wasn't that great but you know there we are number 20 number 21 was ourselves in germany the marquee of londonderry all these ones were like uh, examining the German, the German threat. Um, how did this happen? How do we get to this point? Um, very, very topical. It was all anyone was talking about. Um, then another Pelican one. So we got this one on uh, design by Anthony Bertram. Lots of pictures in this one. Very nice, very nice stuff. Now, number 23, wasn't actually issued that that was the first number um that was never used uh, i'm not quite sure why but as i said sometimes um certain titles would get abandoned and they just you know they just wouldn't use them so it happened um you know across lots of uh, series with uh, penguins so it's nothing too unusual i guess um but i guess even more so with something like the penguin specials where titles just um could all could be out of date before they even hit publication um, so the next one in the series then is number 24, which is They Betrayed uh, Czechoslovakia. Then we've got number 25, I Was Hitler's Prisoner. That's a red chap who actually managed to escape Germany. Nazi Germany. Number 25. 26, so Between Two Wars. So that was a uh, that, that lull period between the end of the First World War and the start of the Second World War. This is when, of course, Churchill was in Parliament trying to wise them up to the growing threat in Germany. And if you've ever read Churchill's history of the Second World War, which I do recommend, it's fantastic. The entire first volume is basically, I told you so. <laughs> um, but after that, it's, it's a fantastic account uh, once he becomes Prime Minister. Um, Britain's Health, number 27 here, based on the PEP report, Lord Hoarder. So Britain's Health back then, 40 a day. 
That's what their health was. Another pelican, uh, number 28, Microbes by the Million. I seem to remember this is quite a, quite a, quite a famous, uh, famous book. Number 29, still no sign of these struggling with paper rationing at the moment, but believe me, it, it will come. It will come soon enough. Um, so we are, where are we looking here? Yeah, we're still in 1939, you see. Um, it didn't really start to kick in until about end of 1940, 1941. And then you'll start to see it. So number 30, special number 30, Germany, what next? And that's multiple contributors there um, with their essays on Germany. Number 30 there. 31, why war? And these were the simple sort of headline grabbing titles where this would have been on a shelf, on a bookstall, um, and would have sold its 50 to 100,000 copies straight out, I would imagine. Number 31. 32, our food problem and its relation to our national defences. So obviously, uh, as well as paper rationing, we were starting to get food rationing as, as certain commodities weren't able to get um, to the British Isles. So um, this is the start of the nation having to change the way it thought about food production and uh, the increase in, of course, growing your own. Uh, number 33, so there are the new German empire. Colonies, raw materials, trade routes, outlets for population or world domination, the new German empire. Um, yes. Food for thought, food for thought. Number 33, 34, just looking at Poland. And number 35, the last one of this pile, is a book on 100 years of photography. So um, they weren't quite all war related, as you can see. But this is another one in the Pelican guys. And I think this might actually be the last one that was published as a Pelican um, in that format. So that's number 35. Now, I am struggling already with space. So let's see if I can find number 36. So that this one over here um yes here we are so number number 36 so let's get myself a little bit of room so number 36 the the attack from within um once again back to the uh, the war related titles and uh obviously this was something it was on the nation's mind it's all anyone was talking about Everybody in the UK was affected by the uh, Second World War. So that's why, you know, Penguin were there as, as the voice of the public. Now, Yaroslav Hasek, the good, good soldier Schweck. So this was an absolute classic. Um, I wonder how many of this they actually sold. Probably quite a lot. But it's a big, thick book, this, isn't it, for, um, for an old penguin. But I bet you they sold it by the bucket load. And this was, of course, reprinted later on, as I believe, as a, a main series and also as a classic. Oh, there was... Uh, there was a, another couple of um, Pelican specials. So this one, we're on to number 38 now, Viscount Astor um, and B. Seabone Roundtree, British Agriculture, the Principles of Future Philosophy. Number 39, we've got the Suez Canal. I remember getting a copy of this from my dad. Uh, he's probably still got it. Um, he fought at Suez in the 50s, part of his national service. Uh, number 40, uh, Pelican one again on the opera, brand new book, not a paperback original, not a reprint, a book on the opera. I don't suppose many people have much chance to go to the opera at this time of in England. So H.G. Wells, you know, one of my favourite authors, uh, Herbert George, and uh, this is one of his Pelican specials, brand new. This is in, in effect an H.G. Wells first edition, and this is In Search of Hot Water. Travels of a Republican radical in search of hot water. So yeah, in the past 12 months, Mr. Wells has visited and returned from Australia by way of India, Burma, the Dutch East Indies, Greece, and Rome. There we are, and then through through Europe. How amazing is that? So a nice H.G. Wells original. And uh, he did a few for Penguin, didn't he? So uh, he's definitely one of my favorites, and he does come back uh, in, again into the uh, Penguin specials, as I recall. That was November 1939. 
Light on Moscow, Soviet policy analysed. So obviously um, there was still much um, suspicion of the uh, Soviet empire. Now this is quite interesting. Um, so, oh, by the way, that was number 41. Uh, number 42 and 40, 43 were never issued. Um, then we've got number 45. So this is um, in the dark blue covers, uh, similar to the Penguin Hansard. And this is what they call the government blue book. And this is like um, uh, reports of what happened in Parliament and um, and just official gov the official government line on, on certain issues of the day. So yeah, the government blue book. It's actually quite a scarce one, this. And I'm quite lucky to have it in, in a dust wrapper as well. Um, so most of these specials, because they had high print runs, they're not that expensive to get. They're just, some of them are just rare and they might take you a bit of time to get down, but they're not massively collectible per se, um, but a few titles are. And this particular one is one that tends to um, get flagged up as one that is actually harder to get than the most. Um, and that particular one perhaps will go for about, you know, 10 or something like that. So that's number 45. Number 46 here, so we got the, the case of for federal order. Number 47, why Britain is at war. So Harold Nicholson. Number 48, an ABC of international affairs. So the Penguin Political Dictionary. So that's quite a big old thick book as well, isn't it? Now the next one I absolutely love, and there's a few of these, and this is um, special number 49, and it's Europe Since Versailles by uh, the uh, cartoonist Lowe. So these were uh, reprinted. I'm trying to remember the paper. It might be the Express, um, where these, uh, these are reprinted from the London Evening Standard, 1940, and these are, Let's try and get these in the camera. So these are predominantly political based cartoons and caricatures. Some of these of the events happening at the time. So you've got the cartoon and then on the left hand side, you've got the reasoning behind it. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And there's a few of these, uh, these cartoon books. Then we've got number, uh, 50 here, another H.G. Wells one. What are we fighting for? H.G. Wells on the rights of man. So uh, another H.G. Wells original. I mean, it's, that's almost like, um, you know, a long essay, you could say in actual fact, um, which they published there. 51, must the war spread? Yes, number 51. Now numbers 52 and 53 weren't used. Number 54, Unser Kampf, Our Struggle, uh, Sir Richard Ackland. Um, yes, uh, one of the MPs of the day with their slightly controversial look at what he thought Britain should do. Nice copy of that one. Number 54. And we're starting to see the book's thinning a little bit now. Um, as uh, paper rationing just starts to, to kick in. So this one, John had had him, good God. That's number 55. So I'm just pausing there because we have the next row to get through. And these are, these are just here. So that's good news. They're not too far away. So that was number 55. So this is number 56, which is my my finished diary, illustrated one, Sir Walter Sittern. So I guess this was his experiences in Finland. 56, 57, we've got Hitler's War, before and after. So this is, um, once again, a book that's in a few different parts, um, but make up the whole. This is by Hugh Dalton, another MP of the day. Number 57. Now, number 58 is um, the problem of India. And I actually have two copies of this. So this one says for sale in Great Britain only, not for export. So this one's got a big sticker on the front and this other one hasn't. Um, so it's like maybe one is 
possibly yeah this is a this is one where they'd stopped issuing dust wrappers by this time and you had dust wrapper flaps so this is a bit of a confusing one so let's see the difference between these two so this one's first published may 1940 the one with the big sticker on and this one here is it the same 1940 it is so it's just a variation on the first one with that big not for export and one without so uh that's what number 58 is there 59 is stalin and hitler the reasons for and the results of the nazi bolshevik pact there we are that's quite a thin thin little one there once again a, maybe like an extended magazine or newspaper article that has just been put into a penguin special now this is quite nice this is warships at work number um 60 and this is um this sort of explains the uh, the naval warships. So it's an, in that oblong format again, which Penguin didn't do many of these, but I absolutely love them. <laughs> and so that's number uh, number 60, warships at work. And it's little things like that that make this series so much fun to collect. Number 61 was never used. So we then jump on to number 62, which is why freedom matters. So, um, you know, once again, it's just one of those cases where uh, war related subject number 62 getting quite thin now as you can see so we actually have another pelican special hydroponics so uh, i guess that was something quite new back then food without soil and um although inside you wouldn't notice that there was paper rationing however um it is almost clear to, you know 94 when you feel the books they're not anything like as robust as they um as the earlier ones Number at 64 here, so the H.G. Wells again, Common Sense of War and Peace, War, Revolution or War and Ending. And I remember this, uh, actually having a read of this one, it's actually particularly good. Uh, as I said, I do love um, H.G. Wells. That's number 64. Number 65, Christianity and World Order. The Bishop of Chichester. Nice little um, advert for the specials on the back. Be well informed by reading Penguin Specials. Ask your bookseller for the latest list. It's quite a nice little house out there. Uh, number 66, the Penguin Political Atlas, which was um, changing every day, I would imagine. And this is the companion volume to the Penguin Political Dictionary. So a bit of a foxed old copy of that one. Number 66. Now, number 67, number 68, 69 were not issued. We did have a number 70, which is... Um, uh, Labour in the War, introduced by Bevin. So there you go. Organised Labour in the War by John Price with the forward by the right honourable Ernest Bevin MP. Now this is the first one where I would say you could probably notice the page underneath because the because the paper rationing is starting to hit and these books are suddenly getting very very thin paper and the recycling is 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 you know. It is what it is. It was of the time. These books are going to start to get very, very fragile now. Um, 72, here we have the case of uh, the case for family allowances. It's number 72. 73, John Hadman, God in a World of World at War by the author. Of Actually, mint, mint copy that one pretty much. I remember some of these I, I've had duplicate copies of over the years. I've just been lucky and found them. A couple of them, um, in fact, here it is. <laughs> it is a, a double, so this is probably um, a reprint. It's slightly different. Um, so sometimes, if they're nice, Nick, yes, this is a reprint from April 1941, um, and there's a variation on them. I, I, I tend to keep them, so this particular one, see the top one is the reprint from 1941 so it's even thinner um different different back cover to it that one for pears soap number 74 science in war seventy-five so Tom Whitringham New Ways of War nice little uh illustration in the front advertising for Hitler's war I wonder if they advertised much in the way of the other Penguin series, that's the fiction and uh, crime and what have you, that was published at the time. 76, of so the real cost of war, number 76. Oh, 
Oh, we're on the final straight now for this epic video. Uh, Psychology of Fear and Courage, number 77. Yes, yeah, some of these have, have proved very, very tough for me to get. Um, and the very last one that finished my run of all the early ones, I'm going to show you in a minute because I only got a copy recently. Um, I, I did find one on eBay and I believe I bought it. It was only like a fiver. And I thought I'll definitely pay that to finish my run. And then for some mysterious reason, the seller couldn't send it out to me. And I think someone contacted him and said, look, I'll give you x amount if you send it to me so the seller cancelled the sale and i was really disappointed about that um, but it's coming up fairly soon at uh, the interment of aliens so that happened uh, not just in the uk but in america as well um, number 80 which is europe in chains a real thin little book here many people are asking what difference would it make if hitler won there's a defeatist uh, defeatist attitude if ever there was one Number 80, 81, so this is a thick one, and uh, Russia by Bernard Pears. I believe this one is um, is quite well known. Uh, nice advert on the back with the, the illustration there for other Penguin books. And they're still offering a free catalogue if you write to them. Number 81. So, number 82, so one of my absolute all-time penguin special favorites and that's aircraft recognition now in america these were released under the title of what's that plane and this is the very first aircraft net recognition book and these went on to sell i believe over a million copies in the various editions um, but this is the very first one by uh, r.a savile sneath february 1941 so by now obviously britain was getting um regular air raids and this was a way for the uh, the youngsters to uh spot what planes was what they were looking at um as well as the Allied and the uh, the British ones. There's a photo section as well in there. Absolutely fascinating, this. Um, I do remember when they got reissued, um, I actually spoke to one of the ladies behind that and she said they had to take one of the original books and colour in the black on all the silhouettes to make the reprint stand out. I mean, it has been reprinted quite a few times and if I see an edition that I've not got, I tend to pick it up. I've not started on the American or Canadian editions yet, but I, I've been trying to pick up all the British ones. So, uh, so this is number 82, and that's the first edition. And then we've got another copy here, number 82, much, much more worn. But this is another edition of it, which is the reprint from April 1941. And I've actually got some more here. So this is, this is a different cover now for number 82. And this is volume one revi revised, and this is from later in the war. It's a revised edition of the first book dated 1943. And you can see just how awful the paper is. It's just terrible, isn't it? Now, the first modern day reprint of it is this one. So it's, this one's actually ever so slightly faded, unfortunately. However, it's pretty hard to get this one. And this was the first reprint facsimile edition from 1990 with a, a new introduction by William Green. So see, looks quite familiar with the same pictures. And then it was re-released again just a few years ago. So nice bright white covers. And this one was a re-release in 2006. So we are still talking over 10, 10 years ago since it last saw the light of day. Um, so one of my absolute favourites, that. Now we've got another um, anthology of cartoons by Lowe. So this is number 83. This one is in hard covers as opposed to the first one, which was in soft pack, which is uh, even more incredible considering the time it was published. Um, but once again, it's the same format where you've got the, uh, the cartoons on the right with the uh, explanations of what was behind the cartoon on the left, what was going on. And that's... Uh, once again, they make fantastic historical reading. Next one we've got is number 84, which is The Truth About France, Louis Levy, which um, was reprinted in French. Um, so I think it actually came out as a French Penguin book first and then got reprinted as a special. I've got the, the French edition of that. Um, another one, a slightly different look to this one, but it's account of the RAF's first year in the war, which is um, Flight to Victory, which is absolutely classic, this one. Um, so that's that one. Number 86 wasn't released. Uh, number 87, so you've got Food, 
the deciding factor a guide to rationing and food values so um already rationing was beginning to take effect and people were, were being affected by it another one in that slightly weird oblong format this one on world shipping by ac hardy author of warships at work which is the other one so it's trade routes ship types cargo ports coasts and canals uh, once again i do absolutely love these weird format books and uh, this one's really nice uh, i guess um bit of an unusual one so i guess that's probably why it came out as a special and here's um a revised edition of that one world shipping so as i said i do have a few of these in in duplicate editions and that's just um, a slightly updated and revised edition which came out um when was this one published uh just for the sake of completeness, it was reprinted two years later, so 1943 rather than 1941. And we're almost there. We are on the home stretch. So we've got number 89 now, the Catholic Church and International Order. We've got number 90, the Penguin Book of Food Growing and Storing. So once again, by this time, the nation was being encouraged to grow your own and start looking after our food and think about our food because everything was becoming much more scarce and that's why that's the, this tiny little thin book is getting the nation prepared and ready um, and sensible people they will be reading this sort of stuff um, another real favorite of mine um signaling and map reading for the home garden i can't help but look at this and think of um, dad's army that's that's all i think of when i uh when i see this book and um uh, my son did a little thing on this on the second world war and i actually uh lent this one for them for their display along with uh unarmed action and things like that some of my penguin specials uh and i think they went down very well number 92 so we've got generals and generalship by general wavell um very very thin little book that only like 50 pages perfect for the specials of this time we've got by the bishop of truro the gospel for tomorrow number 93 see how thin these are uh, number 94 the french canadians today uh, so this is quite interesting it's got the blue writing on the front i'm not quite sure why they did the blue but um uh, interesting all the same that they didn't use the black um, once again you can see the very very thin paper um, and uh, well it is what it is I guess 1942 um, believe me penguins from this period are extremely expensive so I think these create a bit of a bargain now this was the one that um, I found the most trouble to get to finish my first hundred in first edition and it was this one number 95 which was the Nazis in Norway so if you do come across a copy of that um, you're doing well because it's a scarce one number 96 so planning the war um, so this is once again that our, our problem is to concentrate the greatest amount of strength it is possible to develop at the point where relative at the strength the enemy is at its weakest so there we go um number 97 so the remaking of italy so quite a thick book this one um and uh, i'm surprised that this actually came out when it did because um you would think that that wouldn't have been able to be published under such a um, strict papering rationing regime. Uh, number 98, Marcel Hoden, A Diary of World Affairs. Uh, back to another little, very thin, thin little book there. 99, a book on lay farming. This is another particularly scarce one um, uh, by a forward by the Right Honourable R.S. Hudson MP, who was the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries. And this is, once again, we're getting the nation ready for... Uh, growing their own and do it being self-sufficient and the very last one we'll look at today and i do apologize for it being such a super long video but i hope informative all the same is number 100 reaching for the stars So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this first look at these vintage penguin specials. Now, I am going to be doing a follow up video. Uh, my numbering actually goes up to about 280, issue 280. So um, potentially there'll be at least one more video, but possibly I might need to slip that into two videos as well. So look out for those in the future. As for today, thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, do please give it a thumbs up. And if you've not already, do please hit that subscribe button for regular vintage Penguin book content. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.